This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So guys, I've wanted to put a bit of a video together to show you how to get the best out of your basing materials. So whether you're just starting out or you're a veteran of this kind of work, I just want to touch on a few things that I always skip over when I'm doing my terrain videos. So let's start with just basing flat boards. Basing flat boards doesn't have to be flat. What a lot of people do is they chuck on the covers and then tap them off. Don't do this. There's a few reasons why you shouldn't. One, because you can see the lines of the glue and the brushwork underneath. And two, it just looks flat. The way that I like to do this is just pour it on and pile it up. And that way it is still flat, but you've got some nice natural undulation. And it's that undulation that makes it look a lot more natural and a lot more interesting, even if it is just going to be a completely flat board. And all we do to seal that in place is just put matte scenic sealant over the top. And with the matte scenic sealant from our range, you don't need much. You just need to mist this over the top and let that soak in and it'll be rock solid. And when this is dry, it'll look a lot more natural with that basic undulation. Now, before we go into this video, let me tell you a bit more about this video sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform. I've used it myself and I know a lot of other people that have used it. Do you want to explore your creative and career options? Learn what it takes to break into a creative industry. Take classes, find your creative voice and style. And with that, you're going to want to be your own boss. So learning financing tips, starting a new slide project to attract the right clients or start a new business. Or even if it's in your own line of work, there's something to learn. I use Marcus Brownlee's YouTube success and I learned quite a lot as well, which I didn't expect. I've used it and if you don't want to take my word for it, the first thousand people to use my link below in the description will get one month absolutely free. And I'm telling you guys, the sort of stuff that you can learn on this will make you better at whatever you're trying to get into. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now, when we're basing for deserts or we're wanting something with a bit more rockier textures, how I like to do it is by adding the coarser stuff on there first. Now, I don't put this like everywhere how I want it to finish. I just get the main undulation of that coarse aggregate down first. This is desert sand and stone. After applying that, what I then do is I use a finer basing cover, like Tropical Beach, to fill in them areas. And again, I'm not just throwing a fine covering on, I'm letting this fall and land and pile up as it needs to. I'm not knocking this off or making it flat. And you do this so it helps everything blend together. Once you've got all that laid down, so it doesn't look as static, I go in there with the coarser base ready again, just to sort of spread it out and make it look a lot more natural. Working dry is great because you get an idea of what it's going to look like before you seal it. And then to seal it, we just use matte scenic sealant to spray and seal that in place. And the sealant also gets it to a point where it ties it together a lot better as well. Now you can do this with many different ground covers. And you can even do it with just a single ground cover. You don't have to use multiple. So arid earth, I put the course down. And then what I do is I can sieve that. So it'll help blend the course into the fine. And again, let that just pile up rather than trying to get a thin coat on there. So you get them natural undulations. So it doesn't seem like a flat gaming table. Now, another thing that I like to do, especially when I want a couple of tiny rock outcroppings and things like that, you can just literally stick some bark down and then throw your base covers around the bark and pile that up. You don't have to build that up with compounds and putties. I would advise using compound and putties if you're doing things in a large area, but for little areas like this, just pile it up. You get a far more natural look because you're getting that sort of pile of earth around the rocks. And this is how I make my shallower rock formations look more natural. And again, just pour it on, let it do what it wants to do. Yes, you are going to use a little bit more product, but the finish is so much better. Now, one thing I do want to cover is the matte scenic sealant. I use it an awful lot to build up them layers. Now, when you get to the 
point in a project where you've been using it, don't set this to side for five or 10 minutes to dry because it will block. So we have had a few comments asking my nozzles blocked, what do I need to do? So after every single time that you use this, wash it out. And the way I do it is with some warm soapy water, you just take the nozzle off, you dip it into the soapy water to get the excess off the pipe and even round the nozzle, the inside the cap, give it a good clean. I know this seems a little bit over the top, but trust me guys, if you want that spray top to last, this glue is very, very strong. And just spray it through that pipe until it's clear, put it back on the bottle and seal it with the lid. And that should be great for your next application. Now, Snow is one of them products that can be quite complicated and it's been a task of ours for quite a while now to make snow as simple as possible and this is the easiest way I can recommend to use snow. Using our snow powder start with darker base reddies, some dark tufts and then simply spray this from above with the matte scenic sealant. The reason that we're doing this is we're trying to recreate the areas of where the snow is going to land more the glue is going to go into the recesses and there's going to be more glue in the recesses than on, say, tops of the tufts, for example. And it's as simple as sprinkling it on there. Now, I like to just get a, a fine covering all over and we have been working with the product to keep some transparency to it. So when it sets into the glue, you get that sort of icy edge where the glue's kind of melting. If you want some thicker areas, just pile it up and use it exactly like you would another ground cover keeping that natural undulation as good as you can with the depth. Now, your basic landforms that we did at the start of this video, they look fine as is. You could use that as a baseboard, but we can add more to them. And I want to go over flocking and other things that you can do to add more textures and get that more realistic look to them. For more earthy textures, I like to start with dark green foam. And as you can see, I've just piled that up very thickly. And then with the mid green or green blend, I go around there just sort of filling in the gaps and letting it sort of sit underneath and on top of it. And I don't worry too much about this. It does look fluffy at this stage, but when you come in with the scenic sealant and you start to spray that down, what actually happens is it sort of squashes it a bit. The glue soaks into the foam and it helps it blend and look a hell of a lot more natural. Working dry is very good because if you get something wrong, you can just tap it off and do it again. But you need to get an eye in for it to sort of see how is this going to look before I spray it down. If you're working with more paler ground covers, I use paler grasses, so like light, light green, for example. And I throw this round around rocky areas to show where seeds and stuff will get stuck around the rocks. And again, I don't go too intense with the desert colours because it's arid, you don't want too much green and growth in there and seal that down, but pile it up and let it do what it wants to do. For the more experienced um, terrain maker, you can use static grass. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into static because that's a video all on its own, but just going over the flocks that you've put down, it adds more textures and more colors because the colors of the foam flock do come through static grass because static grass is very transparent. And how I build that up is I just had a few specks of glue on top of the grass that I've already done, getting less and less and less as I build this up. And then you get a very natural look that's making your flat gaming table look not so flat. So if you wanted to do a six by four gaming table that was completely flat, doing this makes it look a lot more interesting. Now for the people that don't have applicators, tufts are the next best thing. And we sell our tufts now in a range of shapes and sizes. And how I like to place them down is I, I put a big bulk of grass in the middle and then I work away in like kind of triangles, getting smaller and smaller away from the big bunch of grass. But you don't stop there. If you're using tufts, you need to get that sort of change in height. And I grind up leaves. I have like a pot of old flocks that I've swept up off the side and I chuck it all in a pot to act as like brush and stuff that's around dead foliage. And adding things like sawdust flocks, it adds another texture, it adds another colour. And I just like putting brown sawdust around things like big formations of tufts because it's more dead foliage. It's, it's wetter ground cover because it looks like that sort of slightly browner wet soil. And building up these layers just adds to the look. 
So I hope you've learned something with this video, guys. It's a very basic sort of beginner video. But it's things like this that I don't speak about when I'm doing big gaming tables and stuff like that. So I thought I'd do a bit of a do's and don'ts video showing you how to get the most out of very simple techniques to get some awesome ground covers. So if you are doing just a flat gaming table, you can make it look a hell of a lot more interesting just with a few simple steps. I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again for the next video. Love, love, love.